you've gotten Llama into Tiny Grad. Mm -hmm. You've gotten Stable Diffusion into Tiny Grad. What was that like? Can you comment on like what are um, what are these models? What's interesting about porting them? Uh, so what's yeah like what what are the the challenges what are, what's naturally what's easy all that kind of stuff there's a really simple way to get these models into tiny grad and you can just export them as onyx mm -hmm. and then tiny grad can run onyx um so the ports that i did of llama stable diffusion and now whisper are more academic to teach me about the models but they are cleaner than the pytorch versions you can read the code i think the code is easier to read it's less lines there's just a few things about the way TinyGrad writes things. Here's, here's a complaint I have about PyTorch. nn.relu is a class, right? Mm -hmm. So when you, create a, when you create an nn module, you'll put your nn relus as in a init. And this makes no sense. Relu is completely stateless. Why should that be a class? The, but that's more like a software engineering thing. Or do you think it has a cost on performance? Oh, no, it doesn't have a cost on performance. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that it it's... That's what I mean about like Tiny Grad's front end being cleaner. Ah, I see. Uh, what do you think about Mojo? I don't know if you've been paying mm -hmm. attention to the programming language that does um, some interesting ideas that kind of intersect uh, Tiny Grad. I think that there is a spectrum. And like on one side, you have Mojo, and on the other side, you have like GGML. Mm -hmm. um, GGML is this like, we're going to run Llama fast on Mac. Mm -hmm. And okay, we're going to expand out to a little bit, but we're going to basically go like depth first, right? Mojo is like, we're going to go breath first. We're going to go so wide that we're going to make all of Python fast. Mm -hmm. And TinyGrad's in the middle. TinyGrad yeah. is, we are going to make neural networks fast. Yeah, but they uh, they try to really get it to be fast, compiled down to specific uh, hardware, and make that compilation step as flexible and resilient as possible. Yeah, but they have Turing completeness. And that limits you. Turn. So that's what you're saying. It's somewhere yeah. in the middle. So you're actually going to be targeting some accelerators, some, like some some number, not one. My goal is step one: build an equally performant stack to PyTorch on NVIDIA and AMD, mm -hmm. but with way less lines. And then step two is okay. How do we make an accelerator? Right. But you need step one. You have to first build the framework before you can build the accelerator. Uh, can you explain ML Perf? Uh, what's your approach in general to benchmarking tiny grad performance? So I'm much more of a like build it the right way and worry about performance later. Sure. Um, there's a bunch of things where I haven't even like really dove into performance. The only place where tiny grad is competitive performance wise right now is on Qualcomm GPUs. Mm -hmm. uh, so tiny grad is actually used in OpenPilot to run the model. Mm -hmm. uh, so the driving model is, is is tiny grad. When did that happen? That transition. About eight months ago now. Um, and it's 2x faster than Qualcomm's library. What's the hardware of open, uh, uh, that OpenPilot runs on, the the, uh, the Kama AI? It's a Snapdragon 845. Okay. Uh, so this is using the GPU. So the GPU is an Adreno GPU. There's like different things. There's a really good Microsoft paper that talks about like mobile GPUs and why they're different from desktop GPUs. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things is in a desktop GPU, you can use buffers. Uh, on a mobile GPU, image textures are a lot faster. On a mobile GPU, image textures, an image, okay. And so you want to be able to leverage that? I want to be able to leverage it in a way that it's completely generic, right? So there's a lot of, there's, Xiaomi has a pretty good uh, open source library for mobile GPUs called Mace, where they can generate, where they have these kernels, but they're all hand-coded, right? So that's great if you're doing three by three comps. That's great if you're doing dense map models, but the minute you go off the beaten path a tiny bit, well, your performance is nothing.